Welcome, this is an introduction to TensorFlow. My name is Jack Brzezinski. Uh, my background is mostly artificial intelligence and machine learning. I've been involved in a number of research projects and uh, um, in industry applications um, relevant to um, data mining uh, of high dimensional textual data. Uh, natural language processing, question answering, uh, conversa conversational interfaces. Uh, I'm also interested in uh, uh, interface design and uh, recently I've been involved in uh, robotics projects uh, analyzing sensor data, uh, spatial information for navigation pur purposes, uh, reasoning uh, and, uh, and so on. Um, so this is going to be um, an interesting topic for me uh, since uh, TensorFlow is one of many new tools, uh, quite exciting tools um, that uh, are popping up uh, and are helping us to deal with uh, many new challenges uh, um, res resulting from the volume of data available, resulting from the new applications. Um, that are uh, increasingly uh, uh, essential to the new economies and uh, mm, TensorFlow is really uh, one of those uh, interesting ones. Uh, we will talk uh, for about 10 minutes on uh, the following topics. Uh, we will try to look at applications, um, we will uh, look a little bit into the interface uh, uh, and uh, what it brings to the table and try to compare TensorFlow to uh, other available tools um, out there. Okay, so what is TensorFlow? Uh, I, I guess it depends on the point of view, um, what is really important to the, to the person that is using it. Uh, well, if the uh, user interface is the key uh, aspect of, uh, of that tool, then I guess we can uh, think about uh, categorizing TensorFlow into an integra integrated development environment category. If the uh, algorithm is really the focal point, then perhaps we could look at the left-hand side of this uh, figure and uh, kind of uh, look at the uh, many tools uh, listed here um, uh, related to statistical computing, machine learning and so on. Um, if we are really, in, really into the uh, uh, directed graphs, then perhaps uh, the visualization aspect of the, uh, of the algorithm is uh, going to be a key uh, aspect for us. So uh, uh, I guess uh, TensorFlow brings to the table uh, a few uh, interesting, very uh, useful uh, uh, features um, that m might be important in, uh, in complex uh, data analysis. There's no question about that. Right, so um, the TensorFlow is really uh, a library uh, uh, for uh, building graphical interfaces. Um, building uh, complex uh, deep learning algorithms and uh, I guess uh, if we look uh, at TensorFlow from deep learning that's really what is uh, the key aspect here because deep learning in itself is uh, not bringing anything new to the field of AI and machine learning. Uh, deep learning um, in my opinion is really a, a name for uh, more complex uh, analysis of data that uh, requires not just an application or one or two uh, algorithms, not just uh, uh, some sort of ad hoc data pre-processing. Uh, deep learning is really a term that describes uh, what we are dealing right now with a large amount of data, heterogeneous data, structured, unstructured, that requires uh, uh, a lot more uh, than, uh, than just uh, an ad hoc approach. So if we need to build some sort of a systematic learning system that can handle uh, various problems in inherent to the current uh, um, 
you know landscape you know in the data analysis field then you need to that we need to build something much more complex than just uh, just a library that will be hosting uh, some sort of a neural net uh, application trained for a specific uh, task so uh, so deep learning is, is here and um, it requires a new approach now uh, using a graf graphical interface is not the only approach there's nothing that stops us from uh, building uh, you know uh, c++ libraries you know that will deal with problems uh, uh, at hand but um, you know having a graphical interface is really an advantage because it's kind of allowing us to be more systematic and you know besides we all know how well we design code uh, usually it's not a primary concern so if if we are working at some sort of a, a time cr in, in, a, in a time crunch situation uh, then sometimes uh, uh, designing code which might involve you know graphical representation of what's going on is uh, sometimes not a primary objective so um, so being forced into a graphical interface is, is I guess uh, advantageous uh, also uh, tensorflow is uh, uh, associated with uh, you know those current difficult problems um, that we are facing uh, natural language processing image processing so um, uh, I guess uh, those kind of problems are forcing our hand into you know being a little bit more user-friendly I guess uh, uh, during the um, uh, data analysis process so uh, personally um, I am a programmer and uh, I, uh, I love to write code However, there is uh, there have been very uh, exciting tools for you know a long time around, and uh, I guess one of the first ones that that I really liked was you know the the Clementine data mining package, uh, which uh, enabled us to build deep learning networks. Um, uh, we could put multiple stages of data processing we could put into the network multiple algorithms kind of compare them um, we could even devise our own algorithms and kind of put them on uh, inside the graph um, there is currently there is uh, other tools that use uh, visualization in the field of data mining or AI um, but in other fields like uh, for example in robotics uh, you know PLC programming is mostly a graphical endeavor so what you see here is a ladder logic uh, graphical uh, interface to writing uh, code for programmable logic controllers so uh, I uh, think that uh, graphical tools is uh, is really a, a good way to develop code uh, and um, uh, especially uh, if uh, it involves really uh, um, a lot of modules um, working together to accomplish something so it's really uh, it's really an advantage All right um, so uh, what are the other characteristics um, well um, in the name of the algorithm there is the word tensor right so uh, high dimensional arrays um, have been around in uh, in many applications uh, you know like for example in engineering um, tensors are important to express the state of, of a material under stress or something like that so um, so tensors uh, here uh, uh, kind of uh, being promoted to enable us to layer various uh, uh, aspects of the data into uh, you know tabular uh, representation uh, which uh, you know which is probably a must in, in a lot of applications uh, portability is uh, another advantage uh, uh, so um, you know the networks that we develop uh, you know using tensorflow can be uh, moved between computers uh, really easily um, another characteristic is that you know there is a Python interface but underneath there is a C++ implementation uh, which uh, probably uh, is an advantage because you know there's so much C++ code around there and uh, it's really uh, something that um, is efficient and uh, brings to the table a lot of um, advantages from the programming perspective and also um, you know G GPU support um, you know GPUs you know highly parallelized computers um, you know when within our uh, you know desktops uh, are really um, you know the way to go for a lot of 
you know, computational expensive applications. So uh, that's really, uh, really a big plus. Right. So um, obviously, um, you know, the, the application is deep learning and what we are looking at is kind of uh, a very good uh, uh, representation of the problem at hand. So, you know, at the bottom uh, you'll see, uh, you know, some sort of a collection of pixels uh, depicting something. And we need to find a way to uh, convert those pixels, and that's where the tensors come into play, uh, in a way that is convenient to process. And uh, um, then we need to de devise algorithms that will quite possibly in many many steps arrive at some sort of a conclusion that um, you know there is um, you know a man sitting uh, uh, and uh, that's the representation of of the you know unstructured or semi-structured information in the image so in order to get from the bottom of the graph to the top of the graph um, it's uh, it's quite a task uh, and um, deep learning is really uh, the way to go uh, and uh, graphical interfaces really help. Right. Um, so there is um, there is many tools around, and um, um, I'm sure that uh, uh, there is many more uh, tools uh, that will be developed in in the near future. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm guessing that uh, there's going to be two directions um, where uh, the tools will be uh, kind of uh, going. One direction is going to be similar to TensorFlow, where uh, you know the re regular quote-unquote PC architecture is going to be uh, is going to be used, and um, the uh, parallelism of uh, graphical um, the video cards will be taken advantage of to, to handle the, the sheer size of data. So that's kind of the PC route and probably the other route for the data analysis or data mining tools or deep learning tools will be going into the direction of, of cloud and Hadoop and, and those those things where um, you know, uh, you know, if, if you are facing uh, terabytes of data, uh, then uh, you know there is some difficult decisions uh, to be made uh, regarding uh, how do we um, how do we make the data analysis process effective. So, uh, but one way or another, you know, the primary question uh, is that um, you know the programmer doesn't have to be a uh, data scientist and you know the programmer doesn't have to be a machine learning uh, wizard and conversely uh, a data scientist or, or somebody who has a deep understanding of machine learning doesn't have to be able to handle uh, you know uh, video card programming or, uh, or or cloud computing programming so I'm seeing uh, I think a big push towards uh, kind of making uh, making the, the tools uh, widely available to the uh, data analysis community uh, and uh, and I think it's a good um, good approach to allow the programmer to kind of be a programmer and and focus on the implementation and focus on the platform and focus on uh, on uh, on so many challenges that um, result from the half hardware and software uh, applications and uh, allow the data analysis to be uh, a little bit more uh, uh, streamlined and uh, uh, user-friendly um, for uh, for for the other group of of, um, of people invo involved in data analysis. So uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'm hoping that um, in the next presentation I will be able to perhaps get under the hood a little bit more and uh, show uh, the basics of the uh, TensorFlow algorithm. I'm also planning on uh, putting together some presentations that will, um, uh, exp uh, that will present uh, other uh, algorithms used uh, by the deep learning community. Thank you.